Hello everybody, my name is Anthony, aka Tone14, I am bringing you week 8, my week 8 team builder of the NES, for when I go up against Broods, coach of the Golden State Lux Rays. We are trying to keep our momentum going after a nice 4 nothing win in our last battle against the Drakeful Dragonites. And heading into the midway point of the season, we are sitting pretty with a 5-2 record. Hoping to make that 6-2 and two and as we hit the midway point of the inaugural season. Now, I will not underestimate my opponent despite the fact he has a very threatening team, but my opponent is only 1-6. and six. Nevertheless, I am going to treat my opponent like I do any other opponent. I will try to come away with a W. As you see, my team is on the left and my opponent's team of 11 is on the right. Just to give it a brief rundown of his Pokemon, he has the Thunderous, a, um, I've, we've battled Thunderous Therian before, Thunderous Incarnate is the faster one with, with access to Prankster, can run Defiant, but I don't really see that being an issue simply because I don't really have anything that can really lower his stats other than like a random defense drop from one of my moves, who knows. But it's a very, um, it can mess me up with Prankster, Thunder Wave, can Nasty Plot, can do all sorts of things for his team. Cresselia, sort of an, a big issue for my team simply because it's a very bulky mon, can run Subcall Mine, can do utility with Thunder Wave, can access to recovery and Moonlight, can do all sorts of things that can throw me off, which is why I consider it a threat just because of its bulk and what it can do for him and what it can do against me. Uh, Fortress, um, Stealth Rocker, set up spikes, can rapid spin, provide slow volt switch, can be a little bit passive at times, but has good typing, but I can take advantage of it if he does bring it as I do have some weight of dealing with that Fortress. Whimsicott, another Prankster Pokemon he has with Prankster Elite C, Prankster Encore, can Stun Spore, can potentially bring a offensive Life Orb set with Giga Drain, Moonblast, possibly Hurricane, who knows. But Whimsicott is a very, it's a very good Pokemon that can also throw me off. He has a Coffabrigus, a nice bulky Ghost type, can be a Toxic Spikes user. Has access to Willow West, can hex, Shadow Ball, can haze, can removes my um my boosts, things like that. The mummy ability can mess up my Drudigan, my Scolope, any of my physical attackers. Gets rid of my ability, changes it to mummy, which will screw mostly screw up my Scolope as I can't increase its speed with speed boost. Has that light part, another prankster user, three of them, my god. Um Pretty much the same thing as the Whimsicott, as Prankster Encore, can Prankster Thunder Wave, access to knockoff, can run like a Hone Claw set, has good offensive coverage moves like the knockoff, Sucker Punch, um, Gunk Shot for my Gardevoir, things like that. He has a Mega Venusaur, one of the best Megas in the Draft League format, can go offensive or defensive with that typing. Thick Fat giving it and a resistance to fire and ice attacks, making it only weak to flying and psychic, which can be um, very difficult for me to break down. Access to recovery and synthesis can leak seed, do all sorts of things that can cause my team problems. Has a Suicune, another a bulky water type, can call mine to the ends of the earth. Um, with the most popular set being Crocoon, he can run um, Rest Roar to um, stop me from boosting alongside him, stab Skull, can Ice Beam, do all sorts of stuff. Uh, but it's up there with Cresselia in terms of a mon that's kind of difficult to break down. The only difference is it doesn't really have reliable recovery outside of Rest. Not that I'm saying Rest isn't um, reliable, but it's just, it's not immediate recovery like Moonlight is. Um, Star Raptor, another hard hitting wall breaker with um most likely going to be a choice scarf set with that reckless brave bird reckless double edge close combat for um coverage uh quick attack with priority um very good solid pokemon a bit underrated but i like it as a whole based on because it comes in and does its job it's a nice revenge killer etc etc 
Dramanitan, pretty much in the same category as um, Star Raptor. Most likely you'll see it being either Choice Scarf or Life Orb set with that sheer force. It can be a nuisance with that with sheer force flare blitz. Can U turn for momentum? Um, sheer force rock slide, superpower, all sorts of coverage options to go along with flare blitz can be a nuisance. And last but not least, he has that Hitmon Lee. Can do all, can be a rapid spinner. Um, can do fake out on burden. Can be a choice scarf reckless set with high jump kick. Another knockoff user. Heck has coverage like poison jab to hit my mega start of war. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but another threatening Pokemon in general. Physical. It could be a potential late game sweeper. As for what I expect, my as for what I expect, um, Brutes to bring versus me. I either expect Whimsicott or Mega Venusaur, one or the other, just so it can deal with my Manaphy. I expect the Cresselia, I'm expecting the Thunderous, the Star Raptor, the Lipard, and most likely the Hitmon Lee as a late game sweeper with that fake Alan Burden set. Just so it can um if I if I don't have Skull out with a um with speed with um at least two speed boost then I can't outspeed it, so that would be an issue. But we move on now to the team I will be bringing against the Eagle One State Lux Rays. And moving to the first Pokemon here, you see we have Crimson back rocking a physically defensive set, Stealth Frog Clear, Flyer Punch Gun Shot, the same exact set I brought a few weeks ago. This is my response to deal with the Star Raptor, Darmanitan, and the Hitmon Lee. Take those physical attacks. Um, make him suffer with the rough skin rocky helmet damage. Try to get rocks up, paralyze those three Pokemon. Make them less of a factor. Fire Punch is here for the Fortress. Gunk Shot is for the Whimsicott. As it gives me good solid um coverage overall, I don't really need Dragon Stab simply because he has that resistance in Fortress, the immunity in Whimsicott. And I felt as though Fire Punch plus Gunk Shot would give me a lot more utility for my team. EV spread, pretty standard, physically defensive spent, max HP, max defense, rest of the attack, try to do a little bit of extra damage with Fire Punch and Gunk Shot. Well, like I said, Dragon's main job here is to be a fit with the physical wall for my team. Just try to take on the Star Raptor, Dramanitan, and Hitmon Lee whenever I can. Um, moving on to the second Pokemon on our team, we have Eggland's Best, the Blissey. For the first time this season, I am bringing Wish, Blissey, Wish, Soft Will, Toxic, and Seismic Toss. My special wall, my check to the Thunderous, my check to Suicune, Cresselia, Mega Venusaur, well not really Mega Venusaur, as it can leak seats to me. But Blissey's job here is to act as a check to those special attackers, pass along huge wishes to keep my Jordigan healthy, keep the rest of my team healthy, Toxic is here to hit the um to wear down all of his bulky threats except for the fortress and the mega venusaur mainly it's also here so i'm not completely walled by that cosmogrigus and seismic toss is just to do consistent damage to all of his pokemon the main issue would be if he brings a sub combine cresselia as a seismic toss will not be able to break cresselia's sub as it has over 200 hit points it can, it can he can EV his Cresselia so it um seismic toss doesn't break the sub on the first try, which means I'll have to use two seismic tosses and he can proceed to this call mine to at free will. So max HP, max defense with the bold nature, pass along the biggest wishes possible, so I'll be passing along 181 hit points to any of my Pokemon, getting them back to full health. Making sure keeping them healthy. Soft boiled is just so for that backup recovery, so I can wish and then soft boiled again if I if Blissey hit the tight spot. But mainly my Blissey's job here is to take hits, keep Crimson healthy, keep the rest of my team healthy for that matter, and to just try to wear down his just try to wear down my opponent's team with Toxic and Seismic Toss. Moving on to our third Pokemon we are bringing this week. Coming back after a three week stint on the bench, we have Tsume Baki the Nido Queen with the Life Orb, Rocky Sludge Wave, Shadow Ball, Flamethrower, and Thunderbolt. Um, I immediately thought of this Nido Queen just so 
I need something immediately to to break down his bulky mons, the Cresselia, the Th the Suicune, things like that, and this set sort of gives me a way to deal with most of his Pokemon, as it does cover a good portion of his team. Sludge Wave is here for Stab, Shadow Ball hits the Cofagrigus harder, and the Cresselia harder than Sludge Wave. Flamethrower is here for the Fortress if he does bring it. And Thunderbolt 2 hit KOs Suicune if it has not set up called mine. Um, Life Orb Shear Force hit as hard as possible with a modest nature, max special attack. 76 EVs and speed will allow my Needle Queen to outspeed uninvested base 85s, such as that Suicune. I outspeed Cresselia, I outspeed a uninvested Mega Venusaur, things like that. Just try to hit things hard. And Neo Queen's job is basically here to take hits, dish them out, uh, deal them out just as hard. And this will most likely be my lead depending on what he brings against me. But we'll see what happens as we go along. Um, moving on to our fourth Pokemon here, we have Lili the Mega Gardevoir back for another week. We're in this time a Stall Breaker set of Psyshock, Hyper Voice, Taunt, and Toxic. Now this Gardevoir is here just for the fact that I cannot allow Suicune or Cresselia or any Pokemon for that matter to set up on me freely. Which is why I'm bringing Taunt to stop the Call Mine shenanigans, stop the recovery from Cresselia. And Toxic is here to wear down both Cresselia and Suicune, which can be a new which are definitely nuisances to my team. Psyshock a Hyper Voice is here for dual stab. Psyshock will hit Mega Venusaur harder because I do believe he will bring a specially defensive Mega Venusaur. If he does bring Mega Venusaur over Whimsicott, it's kind of a 50-50 in that matter. Hyper Voice just for general. Fairy type stab hits everything on his team pretty hard. Um, except for the Fortress, which I'm a bit walled by, but it's not that big of an issue. Um, as for the EVs, I'm running max special attack with the modest nature, hit as hard as possible. 44 speed will allow my Gardevoir to outspeed uninvested base 85s, outspeed, zero speed, Suicune, zero speed, Cresselia, Mega Venusaur, if it's not speed invested. Um, <clears throat> before I Mega Evolve, and then after Mega Evolution, I would definitely outspeed those Pokemon. My fault is though that. I want to get the taunt off before I Mega him to ensure I go faster. I could have run max HP, but I think the extra speed would, wouldn't would hurt. And <clears throat> if I could just keep it healthy with Blissey's wishes, then I will be fine. Um, as Lily is just here, just to make sure I do not get swept by a Calm Mind Cresselia or a Calm Mind Suicune or anything along those lines, I do not want that to happen to me this week. Moving on, so moving on now to our fifth Pokemon here, we have Sentakill, the Scolipede coming back after picking up four kills in the last battle. Rocking Lumberry this time, Swords Dance three attacks, with Swords Dance, Mega Horn, Poison Jab, and Rock Slide. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Um, Scolipede is here to break down the physical walls. It is a late game sweeper if need be. Rocking the Lumberry so I can set up on Suicune trying to Skull Burn me, um, set up on Cresselia trying to Thunder Wave me, Mega Venusaur trying to put me to sleep. Though if he does bring Hidden Power Fire in, a 2 a KO unfortunately, so I have to be worried of that. Um, <clears throat> Mega Horn hits the Cresselia, hits the Lipard, Poison Jab is here for the Whimsicott, and Rock Slide is here for the Thunderous. Hits the Staraptor, hits the Darmanitan harder. And just good solid coverage move overall. EV spread, max attack, hit as hard as possible. 164 EVs in speed with the Jolly Nature will let my Scolipede outspeed a Jolly Max Speed Staraptor. And it will let me outspeed Staraptor if he's Choice Scarf. Hit it with a nice big rock slide if I get to plus two, it will knock it out and after um, stealth rock damage. And this is most likely going to be my win, con win condition, just in the sense that Scolipede can actually clean up if I weaken his walls a bit. 
And if I can get up an SD, I'll be in some. If I'll be in pretty good shape for the most part. So I'm not 100% worried, which is why I'm bringing Lumberry. I do not want my um Scolipede to get worn down by status. I cannot afford that. There'll be an issue if he does bring that Cofagrigus, but it's not the end of the world if he does. And moving on now to the final Pokemon we have on our team, Splish Splash the Manaphy is coming back for another week with the Tailglow 3 attacks with the Wakanberry of Tailglow, Energy Ball, Scald, and Psychic. Um, I was debating between Ice Beam and Psychic for the longest, but the Pokemon that are hit hard by, um, I miss out, I, I, Ice Beam misses out on Whimsicott and Staraptor, but Staraptor doesn't want to switch into a Scald, and Whimsicott does get hit pretty hard by Psychic if I get a Tail Glow up, though he could Encore me on the Switch, which I have to be careful about. Um... <clears throat> So, Wakanberry is here so I can um, take a super effective Electro Attack from the Thunderous. If he does decide to bring it, if he doesn't bring it, then Manaphy becomes Knockoff Water. <laughs> anyway, um, Energy Ball lets me hit the Suicune super effectively, Scald for regular stab, potential burn damage, and Psychic is to hit Mega Venusaur harder than Ice Beam as Thick Fat does reduce the damage. Um, running max special attack, max speed with a timid nature lets me speed tie with a non scarf um, Star Raptor, lets me outspeed non scarf Star Manitan. I outspeed um, Hitmonlee if it doesn't have um, um, Burden Boost. Um, I pretty much outspeed a good portion of his team anyway, but I just figured that. Um, speed time with Star Raptor or Garmanitan would be beneficial for me. I didn't want to run. I was thinking sub Salad, but I needed the extra coverage. So, that's pretty much my team in a nutshell. Also, before I end this video, um, huge shout out to a good friend of mine, Gypsy King, for helping me look, helping me look over the team, helping me fix some of my sets. They were kind of, they were a little bit off this week. He's a good guy, great battler, great friend. Um, if you have the time, I'll leave the description to his YouTube down below. Check him out. He's a great guy, great friend, and overall good person overall. So here's hoping that my week my, my week eight match will go smoothly, and here's hoping that the main red clause is going to launch himself to another W. And until next time, though, my name is Anthony, aka Tone 14 and I'm gonna catch you guys on the flip side. Later.